What should you know about Giants prospect Luis Matos? Find out next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Wednesday, June 14th. Frank Stanfield joined by Scott White. And let's get into it. Mitch Hanniger was diagnosed with a fractured right forearm, so it appears Giants outfield prospect Luis Matos is getting the call. And he's 21 years old, 54 games between AA and AAA this season, was batting 348 with nine homers, 15 steals, and a 963 OPS. Scott, he's 10% rostered. Where would you be looking to add Luis Matos? Everywhere. I mean, I think it's a must in five outfielder leagues. I've already moved him up to around 50th in my rest of season outfield rankings. If you play in a shallow points league, you may not be able to fit him on your roster. I understand. But the potential is very exciting. And uh, it may be overlooked. I mean, even at the time of this call-up, he's only 10% rostered. Usually a prospect of this caliber is stashed in a higher percentage of leagues. Uh, by the time his call-up arrives, 10% means he's basically just deep NL only in dynasty leagues everywhere else, literally everywhere else. Luis Matos is available. Part of the reason for that is it's all been very sudden for him. He was a big prospect, like borderline top 50 prospect entering last year and then had a really bad year, hit only 215 in the minors and, and like hitting for average was supposed to be his best thing. So you could understand why Luis Matos uh, prospect stock tumbled. But this year, he's been hitting well over 300 from the beginning of the year. And when I say it's it's been kind of sudden, he entered, as of a week ago, Luis Matos had just gotten promoted to AAA, had the high batting average, yes, but he had only four home runs all season. He's hit six home runs in the last week. So now he's up to 10, and obviously his overall numbers with that near 350 batting average, they look amazing. And uh, you could understand why the Giants were eager to bring him up. His strikeout rate is only 7%. That's like best in baseball type stuff for a guy with you know actual power. His, his 90th percentile average exit velocity is, uh, is up four miles per hour from last year. And, and obviously we've seen him put a charge in, in balls in the last week, especially. So uh, really good hit tool, hitting instincts with enough power that I think, uh, you know, he, he could, he could turn into a real standout of fantasy contribute some stolen bases as well. I'm really excited about Luis Matos. Again, one of the top prospects in the giants organization, Scott, would you drop James Altman and or Christopher Morrell for Luis Matos? I'd be willing to drop either one of those guys. All right, let's fire up the worryometer here on a Wednesday. And if it's a one, you're not worried at all. Ten, we are freaking out. Let's start off with Luis Sever Severino, who now has three rough outings in a row. He was at the Mets. He only went four and two-thirds innings. He allowed six runs. Five of those earned three walks to so four strikeouts. Ten hard hits in this game has given up seven home runs over his past three starts all of a sudden has a 6.48 ERA and a 1.48 whip. Scott, where is Luis Severino on the worryometer? I'll probably go about a seven. I mean, he was he was looking fine when he first came back from the IL. Not a lot of concerns about starting him again, but this is a real rough stretch for him with a lot of home runs. It's hard to blame that on, on bad luck. It, it's the sort of situation where there, there isn't, there isn't like an obvious red flag to explain what's going on with Luis Severino. I mean, yes, a lot of home runs. The results are bad, but going beyond just the results, I, I, I don't really know what's going on with Luis Severino. So it's, it's hard for me to take too firm of a stance like, oh, he's really messed up. It's time to move on. You know, velocity seems fine. Um, th that's, that's the main thing you look for, of course. And so I, I don't really know what's going on with Luis Severino, but I think the proper response right now is is sit him until he looks like he's back to form, and hopefully that'll happen sooner than later. Nolan Gorman has been a standout for most of the season. He went 0 for 4 with two strikeouts on Tuesday, and in the month of June, he's batting 162 with 20 strikeouts in 11 games. Scott, where are you at on Nolan Gorman? I'll go about a five here. And this comes like right after I totally bought into Nolan Gorman. He's a stud. 
uh, second base, third base eligible. Wish I had given him more credit coming into the year. All that stuff. I was I was in. But now suddenly his year-long strikeout rate with this awful stretch is is right at 30%. And that's that's a difficult strikeout rate to overcome. Granted, the expected stats still look good. He's still on pace for well over 30 home runs this season. I'm not saying everybody needs to bail on Nolan Gorman, but I I'm back to having some doubts as to how good he actually is. And uh Maybe it's just a slump. We can hope for that. But that's a high strikeout rate to overcome. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.